All right, Tide 97, number one for hip-hop is T.T. Torres. Flo Millie's in the building. It's a Friday night takeover. <laughs> All right, so Monday and Tuesday, you had a show here in New York. Yes. I saw the videos online. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Yes. And we were talking behind the scenes. One of your fans made you cry. Yes. How did that happen? Okay, so I was doing a meet and greet, and, like, I normally do meet and greets before every show on tour, but, like, it was this girl in this her boy best friend and they came up to me and like she was already just like losing it before she even came out there so I knew she had like good energy but like when she came up to me she was just telling me everything like how when I dropped my first um, mixtape how it like helped her with her confidence and stuff like that Mm -hmm. so it was kind of like a heart to heart moment that I never really had with a fan are you still enjoying these moments because I know you know it's still early on in your career but you've had you know, a few projects before the recent one you just dropped. Mm -hmm. But does it still feel humbling to you or does it feel like, oh my God, it's getting to be work? Um, Honestly, I feel like it's it's more so me getting to work. Like, I'm more so focused on like, all right, I need to keep going, you know. But I mean, it's still like both kind of in a way because of course, like I was blowing up during the pandemic, so I didn't get to experience the radio interviews or the shows and stuff like that so it's kind of like both hand in which is interesting right because sometimes it's it could go either two ways for artists during a pandemic right you you can't do nothing so you can't get your music right? you're yes. just sitting at home you yes. know putting music out you can't really touch the people yeah. so it's kind of harder to break right mm-hmm. but you on the other hand you've had a lot of success during a pandemic without having to physically be in front of people yeah. but I guess now you can really see <laughs> and feel the energy right for sure yeah like it's it's different because like of course especially it would be different well, I'm not going to say, because I did kind of start to, like, blow up in 2019. So that was right before the pandemic. Right. But, like, when this really started to happen, it was, like, in the 2020. middle. 2020, yeah. yeah. So I was, like, you know, it kind of was, like, a bittersweet moment. Like, I don't really like being in people's face all the time. So I was, <laughs> like, oh, this kind of sweet. Like, I ain't got to do nothing. But at the same time, I didn't want to get, like, stagnant and, yeah. like, used to... Because I knew the world wasn't going to stay like that forever. So I'm like, nah, I want to stay on the move, on the yeah. go. Like, I'm that type of person anyway. So you're from Alabama. Mm-hmm. But now we're seeing you, like like I said, you did a show here in New York. But how has Alabama shaped you to be able to have these experiences and transcend yeah. from there to like, okay, and now I'm in New York in front of yeah. these the hardest people in the world, quote unquote, <laughs> that's what they say. But I don't know. I yeah. think I feel like New Yorkers are nice, you know? I feel what I'm like saying? New Yorkers are nice too. <laughs> like I was telling my Anara, because he's from New York, and he I'm like, he always say I give that vibe off. I guess cause we don't take no shit in Alabama either. <laughs> like we got Southern hospitality, but it's kind of the same way. Yeah. Just I feel like New Yorkers are still like good people, but y'all just have a different way of approaching that. Like yeah. people can see it as like aggressive, but no, nah, I fuck with New York. So. <laughs> yeah. I love it, though. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to really talk about the projects you've put out and um, what inspired your titles, okay? So Ho, why why is you here? And then you still hear Ho. Yeah. Um, what, what made you really want to explore that. that, do that? <laughs> okay. Um, well, I can't really remember the first time I saw that. Like, I know a lot of people thought I got it from Jocelyn, which I did, but I don't think I saw it there first. I remember just being on Instagram. And, like, I'm the type of person that kind of gets inspiration from the oh, random, okay. like, the most <laughs> random things. So I really can't remember where, but I remember I was on social media, and I was thinking of, like, I wanted my title name to be witty and something that was, like, catchy. Catch attention. Yeah. yeah, like, so I made sure it was something like that, and I felt like that kind of fit my personality. And then once people started saying, oh, that's Jocelyn, I was like, whoa. Like, I started seeing the memes, and it just all came together because, like, I love reality TV anyway, so. I was going to ask you, are you an avid reality TV watcher? Yeah, I am. <laughs> it's kind of Because your videos and skits are, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. kind of, like, reality-ish, you mm-hmm. know, produced. Yeah. Yeah. So do you direct those yourself? No, I don't direct them. It was more like a team effort. Yeah. Um, but like growing up, I I grew up watching reality TV, so we kind of wanted to hone in something on something that was true to me. Yeah. And not just like trying to make me do something. Which one was your favorite? Definitely Tiffany Pollard. Oh yeah, she crazy yeah. as. <laughs> 
love her. That's like my spirit animal. So. No. What's the one thing that, about her that you could say, okay, that's definitely me? First of all, she a Capricorn. Okay. And like, I don't know. I feel like we have similar personalities. Like, yeah. I probably don't show that side of myself all the time in public, but like the way she be like that's all. <laughs> because when so, I watch your videos, I'm yeah. like, yo, this girl is crazy. But in person, you seem shy and yeah. kind of reserved. Don't let that fool you. <laughs> it's just because I don't know y'all like that. But I mean, once people know me, it's like a whole different. It's a whole different side. Yeah, that's really to like protect that side. Yeah. So what y'all see is. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Um, speaking of team, you have a all basically an all woman team that mm-hmm. you have, which is yeah. pretty cool. Your yeah, shout out to Ebony, your manager, mm-hmm. and then you have your stylist. Who, by the way, I just saw her on the cover of was it Forbes? Yeah, she did an interview. Yeah, recently. yeah, talking about your style and everything like that. How yeah. do, how is how empowering is it to have so many powerful women around you? It's very empower empowering because I feel like. That's something we need in an industry like this that always tries to pit women against each other. And it's important for me because I think as a young woman coming into the industry, I need people around me who can look out for my best interests. Yeah, and also, give you that talk. Yeah, and, and have good intentions, you know? Yeah. So I think it's a difference between having like... Uh, no offense, but like a group full of men versus women. Yeah. But I think it's important. I always say, I always, I get a lot of um, young artists, female artists that come to my show. I'm like a woman's executive. Like yeah. all the young rap females love me. Yeah. And I love them. Yeah. But I always tell them if I could give them advice is to have or have big sisters around you. Right. Because it's important we can help you navigate this mm-hmm. industry from all different type of perspectives. Yeah. Not just the business side, but also just have sometimes having a bad fucking day. Yeah, or just learning how to be a woman. Yeah. Like having women around you who, like like you said, it's not always even about the music industry, just like personal things in life, knowing how to maneuver through certain situations, like it's well needed. Yeah, and having that balance, right? Because women have to do it all. Yeah. We have to be caretakers. We have to be mothers to some, um, sisters, and then we got to go out here and perform. Right. And we take care of so much. Yeah, it's so much in one. Like, yeah. So that, that is a lot. That's some big shoes to fill. Honestly. Yeah. And I, I love the evolution, just seeing your growth throughout the process. You know, um, I thought it was a real good moment to see you and Lotto together in that interview. I thought that yeah. was beautiful. How did that even come about? Um, Because so, you guys are on the same label, right? Yeah, we are. Um, RCA. I don't really know how it came about, but I know that whenever they asked me to do because me and Lotto, we were supposed to work on something else. I think she wanted me to be in her video, but I was out of the country. So it was so crazy how it ended up coming together anyway. We did something together. So that was really dope. But I think they just reached out to us and we agreed to do it. I love to see that unity among you two because it could be... It could go the other way, right? It could be like putting pitting y'all against each other. We've yeah. seen that happen. But to see y'all come together, two successful young women, and having that interview, I thought that was just it spoke volumes without yeah. even, you know, yeah, saying saying, saying that much. Yeah, and I always said that like coming into here in the industry, like I've always watched videos of like Missy Elliott and Aaliyah. I know you you seen yeah. a video of them on the photo shoot with yeah. the Brad and everybody, and I just admired that because I'm like. You know, I know we live in in different times, and it's not the '90s. We have cell phones; things are different. But like, I just admire how they all stuck together. It was like they could coexist in the same world yeah. without feeling like it's too many egos yeah. or I'm better than this person. But then again, when you think about it, like to their defense, like in that time, they didn't have social media, which was like a bunch of kids trying to pit them against yeah. each other. But I'm not gonna say it didn't happen, but like. I just think it's too different. Yeah. And it's crazy because your generation, you can't even pick your nose without a camera being in your face. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's so true. It's it's annoying at times, but it's also part of the job, right? Right. It's just about finding that that balance. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's talk about the stage name Flo Millie. Where'd you get that from? Um, so I got Flo Millie from, like, I used to be in a girl group when I was in middle school. And my name used to be Rose Millie. But (laughs) I don't know. I think I got that from, like, a crayon or some shit. (laughs) But, like, after that, I just kind of, like, I'm more, like, I stick to things. Like, I've been wanting to do this since I was nine years old. 
I named been had million it since I was eleven. So I kinda kept the million in it. And then when I went like solo, I just thought flow was cool because you know, people would just compliment yeah. me on the way I rap and stuff. And like your that. flow and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So I took the W off and I was just like flow million. I like it. It, it, it has a good ring. When did you know, like, you said at nine that you wanted to do it? That's when you knew, okay, music? Yeah. And you started just, what, <laughs> journaling? Yeah, like, okay, I'm going to be honest. I wanted to be a singer at first. Can you sing? Um, A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I used to have to sing in the church. Like, I was forced to go to choir rehearsal every week, mm-hmm. Bible study. Like, I, w- I had to be in plays. I had to be a part of the Bible Christmas study program. Wednesday, Sunday, yes. two church services on yes. Sunday. <laughs> Literally, like, I stayed in church. So that kind of got me through, like, being nervous in front of crowds because my church was pretty big. And when I was around nine, I guess that's what got me into wanting to be an artist because my mom, she used to do, like, solos in the church, and she would, like, shut the church down. So wow. I would admire that. And my sister, like, my whole family is just very musically inclined. Mm-hmm. But they all wanted to be singers. Well, not singers, but they all could sing. Yeah. And I was the only one that couldn't, couldn't sing. sing. <laughs> and I remember being in my grandma's house, and I was just crying, screaming, like, why the fuck can I sing? Like, and I was really upset about it. So then I just was like, fuck it, I'm a rap. So then I remember 106 in Park was, like, a big thing mm-hmm. at the time. And, like, I used to see all types of women from Nikki to Trina to Eve to um, Diamond, like just so wow. many women artists just doing it. And I thought it looked so fun. So I think when I turned 11, that's when I decided, like, yeah, and I yeah. would write songs. And, stuff. and you would just write it like poetry and stuff like that. And then yeah, in my book, I would get like uh, notebooks in school. I would just be writing songs, wow. stuff like that. I saw you, I wanted to ask you about um, that MTV performance mm-hmm. when you was on stage. Yeah. Um, you had to perform like throughout the entire, it's, it felt like the entire <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, when I, next time I'm going to see her, I'm going to ask her about her stamina because yeah. I know you was tired after that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was, but honestly, I was really just happy to be there. Like yeah. the fact that. I was performing there because the year before I went to the VMAs and I was on the re- red carpet, but actually going from that to performing was like dope. Yeah. So yeah, I was happy. Are you still in shock sometimes about the moves? Mm, no. Because no. it's more so of like me just, it's been so long. Like everybody looks at it like, oh, she's only been famous for two years. But me, I've been trying to get this since I was 11. Nine. You just so said you like, fell in love at nine, right? Yeah, nine. So I'm like... <laughs> All right, finally, I'm seeing something from this. Even though I didn't really take it serious till I got in high school, but yeah, still, it's just like been on my mind for years. But just think about it: a girl who had a dream in Alabama mm-hmm. to being at the VMAs red carpet, to yeah. putting out albums, to signing your record deal, to having one of the biggest managers in the game managing you. Mm-hmm. Like those are huge accomplishments for someone so young. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's Do you true. take the time to really like sit back and be like, oh, I'm doing that? It's so sad, but no, I don't. <laughs> like, I'm more so, like, not really beating myself up, but like, you need to, be, I'm always focused on the next thing. Like, mm-hmm. how can I be better? So, I guess I don't want to sit in, but I should. Like, I really should, like, actually take that in. Take some of it in. Yeah. And then get get right back on the horse. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, what do you want to do next? Um, I actually want to get into, like, acting a little bit. I still want to do music. But, like, I want to start venturing off and, like, kind of dibbling with that. Like, I want to start being on TV shows, like, actual acting shows and stuff. You can do it. You got, you got a little vibe. I can <laughs> see it. Take one. Action. <laughs> What's your favorite movie? My favorite movie? Probably Baby Boy. Oh, Baby Boy? Yeah, I feel like I could play a role like Taraji B. Henson. Yeah. I could definitely You do could that. definitely do that. From watching your videos, you <laughs> <laughs> do that yeah that or like i don't know like a real it's sad but a hood role like i yeah. feel like i could master yeah or something like that <laughs> yeah. i love it so what's when's the um when's the next project coming out have you started working on that um i don't want to say i'm definitely working on a deluxe to come out first but i don't want to speak about future projects yet but i'm definitely working on new music and coming out with Different stuff. Did you think Casita was going to take off the way it did? 
Honestly, um, I never thought about it, but I knew like I loved that song. I just mm-hmm. thought, like, I didn't think it was gonna take off like that, but I definitely was like, yeah, they gonna fuck with this one. Yeah. Do you feel that when when you're in a studio making music, is that like your thought process behind it? Um. Yeah, especially when I'm when I actually feel it like in my soul, because mm-hmm. like I'm very passionate about music. So I kind of know, as long as I love it, I'm like, somebody out there going to love yeah. it. Yeah. Because we got the same taste. So if I love it, they going to love yeah. it. Yeah. So I'm always like that when it comes to a song that I really am like feeling. Super passionate about. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, listen, we're going to play a little game. You ready? Yeah. Y'all ready for a game? Yeah. All right. It's called This or That. You have to just like spit it out. You can't think about it. Oh, no. You just have to just answer it. Okay. <laughs> Tattoos or piercings? Tattoos. Necklace or bracelets? Bracelets. McDonald's french fries or Wendy's french fries? McDonald's french fries. <laughs> <laughs> love or money? Money. <laughs> you don't want to fall in love no time fuck soon. Fuck these niggas. <laughs> <laughs> you fuck nigga free? <laughs> That's fuck nigga free. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping quiet or do you need a little bit of noise? Sleeping quiet. I need quiet. Yeah. Working Unless with- it's meditation. Oh, you do meditation? Yeah. Yeah, wow, that's dope. Thank you. I'm trying to get into it. You should. I actually could send you some videos, but like, I don't, I'm, I know we playing a game, but I want to tell you something like, it's actually, I don't know if you ever heard about like Hertz before. Uh-huh. So like music in, like, well, let's just say music, it vibrates on Hertz. So I've heard that like 432 Hertz is like the happiest frequency. Really? So if you listen to that, like going to sleep, your brain, like, you listen to that frequency and feel better. So that's I've, why I listen to it. I've tried meditation, but my brain always just keeps wondering. Yeah. I, I, like, it's hard for me to quiet oh, it. Oh, yeah. I definitely had that problem. I know what you mean. Like, I don't even know how I got to this point of, like, I normally just play it when I'm going to sleep. But I just think good thoughts, you know. It's kind of okay. hard, though, when you're not used to it. So I know. Okay. All right. So last question. Um, Working in the morning or night? Morning. Morning, really? I yeah. would think night. Night? I feel like we got more energy in the morning. Like, really? Like, oh my god! Night. I hate getting up before ten really? o'clock. Really? Oh my god! I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> Even though I do got to get up at six for my son because oh, yeah. he got to go to school, but yeah. oh my god! You like nah? I can't do that. Mm-mm. Don't call me. They be like, can we jump on an eight a.m. conference call? No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I can see you after ten. Yeah. <laughs> it's hot ninety seven. Everybody, give it up for Flo Millie.